My name is Chris Holgraf. I'm a researcher at UC Berkeley, and I also work with a new nonprofit called the International Interactive Computing Collaboration. And today what I want to do is give you a brief overview of Jupyter Book and talk a bit about what it tries to do and some of its features before you learn a little bit more how to use it later on. So before I go any further, I just want to say thank you to the Jupyter community, um, as well as to the community of developers specifically behind Jupyter Book. Even though I'm going to be doing most of the talking here, this community is really the, the group of people doing most of the work. Um, and in particular, thanks to the Executable Book Project, which are kind of the stewards of Jupyter Book currently, um, and which have provided a lot of the leadership and, and background use cases that have fed into the project as it stands today. So really quickly, what is Jupyter Book and what is its goal? Um, the goal of Jupyter Book is to allow you to take a collection of Jupyter Notebooks, Markdown files, and other kinds of markup files, and convert them into a beautiful interactive book of many different forms. So as an example, say you have a collection of, again, Jupyter Notebooks or Markdown files. Often these are, say, course material or, or material for a new textbook that you're writing, and you want to present them to people in a more familiar book-like form. Jupyter Book can do that. And here what I'm showing you is the, the HTML or the website output of Jupyter Book. It takes this collection of independent files and it stitches them together into something that looks a little bit more like a book that has a little bit more publishing features, things like that. The goals of Jupyter Book are to display um, notebook content or computational content in general in a more familiar and book-like form. Um, it adds some extra features around authoring and reading to make that a more pleasant experience, but it also adds features specifically around publishing to make it easier to integrate Jupyter Book into academic and scholarly workflows. It has a lot of features that leverage interactive computation, so actually running code in order to, to see outputs and get um, responses but it tries to be as easy to deploy and customize and share uh, as humanly possible so that anybody can use this as a part of their workflow. And importantly, it's runnable anywhere on any infrastructure and it can be used as a part of either an individual person working on their own machine or uh, as a part of production for something like a, a textbook for a course or something like this. So if you want to learn more in-depth information about Jupyter Book and how to use it, I recommend that you go to jupyterbook.org. This is both an example of a Jupyter Book as well as the documentation of Jupyter Book itself. So I quickly want to step through the build process of a Jupyter Book whenever you build a new book. So you start with your raw content files here. And again, this is Jupyter Notebooks, Markdown files. It can also be restructured text files, uh, a variety of different input formats. And when you build your book, the first thing that Jupyter Book will do is detect any computational content in those files and convert them into Jupyter Notebooks under the hood. And what this allows us to do is then execute those notebooks and cache the results of execution. This is important because it means that subsequent times that you build your book, you will only re-execute the content if you need to, if the cache is no longer valid. And Jupyter Book tries to be smart about knowing when it needs to execute and when it can just pull directly from a cache to save you time in building your book. The next thing that it then does is builds an enriched document model of your book and all the difference, uh, the references between pages. So it resolves things like citations, bibliographies, figures, cross-references. Um, it, it inserts a lot of the different features that you would need for an actual published document at the end. And then finally, Jupyter Book can output a variety of different kinds of outputs, the most common being HTML or uh, a PDF, so that you can then take those outputs and share them with your colleagues or deploy them online as a website. So really quickly, I just want to talk about some of the interesting features that are in Jupyter Book, um, and in particular, in a new rewrite that we just completed about Jupyter Book. Um, and you'll go into a little bit more detail about this later on. And as I mentioned, you can also check out the documentation for some of these features as well. Um, so first of all, Jupyter Book supports a special kind of markdown called MIST, or Markedly Structured Text. And what MIST is, is basically common mark markdown, which is the most common form of markdown, with a couple of extra syntax tokens added into it that allow you to do more rich, publishing-ready things uh, with your book material. So one example of this is that you can explicitly tag blocks of content with different kinds of meaning. Um, for example, warnings or tips or notes. Um, in this case, I'm showing an example of an admonition. And Jupyter Book knows how to take these blocks of content and render them in different kinds of ways, um, depending on what it is that you want to do with those, that particular text. 
Another thing that Jupyter Book can do is allow for citations and cross-references, both within and across pages of your book. So this allows you to cite things using a bibtech file and a bibliography, and then to insert that bibliography at the end of a page. It also allows you to do things like create uh, labels for figures or equations or sections on one page of a book, and then insert references to that label later on that will automatically resolve properly when you actually build your book. You can insert figures into your book um, along with captions and along with some formatting that allows you to make it look the way that you want to. Um, so if you include a PNG file with your book, you can then insert that figure into a page along with a caption and, and, and sort of integrate it in with the rest of your narrative if you're, say, writing a paper or something like this. And as I mentioned before, you can also cache any computational material of your, uh, within your book and then insert that material into the book once you actually build it. So you don't need to store the outputs of running your computation before you build the book. You can do that at the time of build, and then you can be ensured that those results are always up to date um, and, and reproducible given the environment that you've specified along with your book. One of the interesting things about executing and caching the outputs of running computational material is you can actually take those outputs and insert them into other pages of your book. So for example, here, let's say I've generated a histogram as well as I've calculated a statistic in a Jupyter notebook on one page. And in another page, I'm talking about the results of actually running that computation. I can use a, a, a little directive in Jupyter book called glue. And what glue will do is grab a, an output figure that you've specified in one Jupyter notebook and paste it into another page in your book. So on the right here, you can see that we've pasted that image, which was generated by matplotlib, um, as well as that statistic, which was generated by our, our Python process, directly into the text from that page. Um, and you can also use JupyterText to write entirely markdown versions of a Jupyter Notebook. So a lot of people want to write Jupyter Notebooks, but they want to have something that is a little bit more diff-friendly, a little bit more Git-friendly. Using JupyterText along with Jupyter Book, you can write all of your content in a missed markdown notebook, which I'm showing an example of here on the left, and then that can be converted into a Jupyter Notebook on the fly once you actually build your book. So you can also execute that content and insert it into your book's page. There are also some interesting interactive features that come along with the website version of Jupyter Book. So here I'm showing you an example of, of two things. One of them is tabbed content. So you can specify content that should exist in tabs so that users can click through in order to, to view what's underneath each tab. And this is particularly use for useful for pedagogy or if you want to show a couple of different examples of something. Um, and on the right, I'm showing you panels and dropdowns. And these are just really quick, lightweight UI elements that you can insert into your book's content from within your missed markdown uh, source file. So you can really quickly control the look and the feel and the, and the layout of your book in this way. And going even a step further, you can integrate uh, kernels, interactive kernels, into your static website as well using a tool called Phoebe, which is a lightweight JavaScript library. You can actually ask a binder hub for a live Jupyter kernel and connect your static page to that kernel so that you can take what once was a static code block and turn it into something that users can edit and then run and then see the results of live directly on that page. So finally, the last thing that I want to note is that while I've been focusing on technical features, and there are many more of them on top of what I've mentioned so far, really the most important feature about Jupyter Book is that it's open source, it's community driven, it's made up largely by people such as yourselves. And so if you're interested in Jupyter Book and you want to learn a little bit more about it, or maybe you even would like to contribute to Jupyter Book itself, please don't hesitate to reach out. Um, this project survives and it thrives because of the support of people like you. So that's it for my really quick introduction to Jupyter Book. I hope that you found this to be an informative and an interesting uh, guide and tutorial. Um, over the next couple of sessions, you're going to learn a lot more about some of the different features in Jupyter Book and how you could build your own books using this tool. Um, but with that, I'm going to leave you with some links if you'd like to follow them along and learn a little bit more. And I look forward to seeing you all online. So thanks very much.